All right, before I get started with this video, it really does stress the importance of testing because if you ain't testing, you're guessing. It's not every day I see a lipstick on a pig or a beautifully installed boiler that nothing worked, not a single safety worked on it. This is that, this is that service call, this is that video. This is one video you have to watch in its entirety. Test, don't it guess. <laughs> what are they doing? They change your lead bend. Did you do the lead bend? Or someone, you hired a plumber for that. Yeah. Oh, all right. Look at this. We have discharge on our 15 PSI relief valve. This is what you experienced before, right? Yeah. Okay, we have almost 15 PSI of pressure in here. And wow, this is as good as it gets. We're gonna turn off the power to the boiler. And what this means is, and that, this further strengthens, it's just steam, this further strengthens the need for annual maintenance, okay. right? I can almost guarantee, and I could be wrong, that your pigtail is clogged. But I am wrong. The pigtail is clean and the pressure troll is operational. It doesn't get any worse than this. Clean. Um, we're gonna turn the power on right now. There's no pressure troll installed. I wanna make sure that the boiler does not. Wow. The boiler runs without a pressure troll. Bro. That's what I was, that's what I was afraid of. We have no pressure troll connected to the boiler, which is a vital safety and the boiler runs. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Mike Dyack. I am a master plumber and president of Pipe Doctor Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. And today is Sunday, March 19th, 2023. It's about 8.50 in the morning, and we're gonna run an emergency service call for a customer who's got no heat. They got a gas-fired Burnham steam boiler. Two other plumbers have been out there over the weekend. Let's see if we can give them heat. One of them say the damper's bad. Another guy says the wet return is clogged. Let's go see what the real story is. Pull up your pants, buckle your belt, and tie your shoes. It's going to be a ride. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You caught me off guard. It was grab my card, too. Oh, okay. And that's all right. All right, right you, Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you, sir? Right good morning. Yourself, sir. Good, good? Good, yeah. Good. All right. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So tell me what's going on. You uh, right. had some plumbers here. and Yeah. I had... Guys here, the boiler evidently went out. Okay. And we didn't have no heat last Saturday morning, whatever, because the thermostat was telling me two hours to heat up. And I was like, it normally doesn't say that. No. And they said it was the um, the damper. Okay. Okay. So finally we replaced the damper. And then after that, he was like, um, what is it? We got, it was going. And somehow it just, um, then he said, oh, the pipe needs to, the return pipe needs to be, um, it's clogged or something like that because he said when he turned on the, the valve down low, some rusty water came out. And I was like, that doesn't sound right. I'm it doesn't sorry. sound right either. It doesn't <laughs> sound right. And I was like, because as you can see, the uh, the tube is clean. Yes. Okay. Now, I mean, I'm be honest, the people who installed the boiler through um, National Grid, yes. they never told me I had to do all of that, like clean it every year and everything. Once so, a month. Oh, well, once a month. So, yeah. <laughs> a five-gallon honest, bucket. I, I haven't touched it, so I'm going to be honest. <laughs> It's all you know good. I, mean? I appreciate the honesty. You know, now you know. Well, I'll teach it. Okay. So <laughs> it's nothing like know. steam. Nothing like steam. So then, you so know. You no, so you have no heat now. I have no heat. Let's go see the boiler. All right. So you got the heaters running. Yeah. <laughs> you got a little one in the house, too. Okay. All right. So there it is. There it is. So, yeah, like, like um, I said in the picture that you sent me uh, last night, it's a very clean system. Um, so, you know, you know, pat yourself in the back. Cause Thank you. It, it's, it's, it's clean. Thank you. Uh, and not only is it clean, but it's actually installed properly. Okay, good. Which is a uh, good thing. You remember who the installing contractor was? Uh, I have the uh, paperwork upstairs. Somewhere. Okay. So let's take a look at. A few I mean, it's only here. been installed, but maybe I think in 2014 or. Okay. So, so he have... flipped the switch on, and he's like, "Oh." Okay. Um, so let's... now let's go into. Okay. Now you you said that the um, this plumber. Mm -hmm. We did the damper for you. I guess that was the damper that was replaced. Yes. Uh -huh. Right. 
I also create videos for educational purposes too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> now you have this, this, it's a, it's an independent steam boiler by Burnham, which is made by us boiler. Yeah. Okay. Your side glass is clean as a whistle, right? right? That That's impressive. Thank and for, for someone who says they don't do anything, you're lying. Okay. <laughs> you must be down here every single day <laughs> with, a, with a toothbrush, no, no, no. With a toothbrush oh. and, clear, and spray nine. <laughs> okay, so now most, well, not most, all steam systems have what we call a return line. Right. It's a condensate line. And in most cases, it's a wet return. Right. In some cases, it's a dry return. Now, if you look at the, it's, it's, I'm just going to educate you while we're here. Okay. Um, there's your water heater over there. Here's right. your boiler. There's only one pipe coming out of the top of the boiler, which is this one here. It needs to be a minimum of 18 inches off the top of the water line. This is at least 24 inches because I can tell because it starts here. Right. This is very good. It comes across here. Uh, this, this this pipe delivers steam to the whole house. And this pipe configuration right here is called an equalizer. Okay. okay? Uh, without confusing things, it, it makes sure there's equal pressure. Right. All right. Okay. But also, it's slightly pitched back down this way, going back to the boiler. Because any, like, wet... You know, boiling water, which water is boiling. It's it's jumping up here, right? right. Some of that water is going to make its way back down here, right? Well, no, that's not all of it. Well, eventually make its way back down here. But if you look over here, this copper line here mm -hmm. is the boiler feed. You have this automatic feeder, which is not doing it there right now because the power is off. Right. Um, this is your incoming water supply. And then you have what we, what we have here, which is lower than normal. And I, I should have picked up on it before, but it's called the Hartford Loop. Okay, um, and this pipe here is your condensate return. Now, if you notice, it goes down, it makes like a U, and it keeps going all the way up, right? Mm -hmm. You have a dry return. So there's no, unless this pipe here, right, the stuff here, uh -huh. that could get clogged, absolutely, but there's right. a drain there, right? And it, it could, listen, this not much... Not much stuff will, will you know, the, 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 the flakes of like, you know, uh, you know, 50, 80 feet of piping in a wet return would be. It's all dry, though, but it could be a clogged there, but I doubt it. Okay. So now we have to address why you have no heat. So he had said to um, don't run anything. Uh, I actually have it written. I, I, he wrote it down. I, can I ask you a question? Did he give you a stupid price to yes, replace his wet return? Yes, he did. And I it was, told is there a comma in it? Um, it was something, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, I that's disgusting. No. I that's you're no. smart, you're smart, because yep. apparently, maybe he didn't know what he was doing. Mm. And that is set a little too high on the differential. Okay, let's turn the thermostat up, or maybe there's another power switch. And let's see what's switch going on top on. of the basement stairs. Didn't hear me. All right, parts identification, rollout switch. Pilot assembly, Sorry, pilot tube. Is there a pilot? Is there a switch on top of the basement stairs? Yes, it's on. It's on. Yes. Thermostat is on. Uh, yes, I'm going to turn it up because he. Uh, there's no illumination lights there. Oh, we have power now. Okay, good. Check our relief valve pressure. That says 15 psi. And our damper is in the closed position and set for automatic operation. Back here, there's our spill switch or blocked vent damper switch. And that's connected as well. But no wet return other than that little inverted trap there. Kicked on and then they, yeah. Well... Since everything is on and it should be getting a call to heat, I'm going to do what I sometimes do on these boilers and go like that. <laughs> if there's any clog in the pigtail, that would turn it on. All right. And the switch is on, on top of the stairs. Yes. That is, yeah, because the power to that. All right, I need my tools to figure right, this out. So here is our 24 volts. I want to bypass the thermostat. This is 110 coming in. Right there, here's neutral for 110. And these two, right, the blue and the white are going to be my R and W from thermostat. So if we take this off and we take this off, if I touch these two together, the thermostat relay should do something. Nope, my damper is doing something. 
my damper is opening. Thermostat relay is, hmm. Damper is open. Where is the thermostat relay? Interesting. Huh, so the only thing I just clicked in was that spill switch. There's a little button. Right, on the back. There. I, I just reset that. And now we have fire. Did it work after we changed the damper? Yes, it did. And then it stopped working. And then he, he cut it down, he cut it off. Because? He said he, um, he spoke with his dad that was probably on the other line. And uh -huh. dad said you couldn't, he couldn't uh, leave it open for some reason. And I was like, dude, I got a, you know, I got a kid in the house. So he checked all of that and he's like, all of that is good. You know, it was nice and clean, but I can see he didn't screw the damper. <laughs> well, I just took that up by hand. I know. You, you're, you have a, well, you, it appears to have a stainless steel lining in there. Yes. Good. Okay, so let me tell you what, well, you saw what I did so far, but right. I pushed in the button on the spill switch. The spill switch is uh, connected to the bottom of the draft hood or this box right here. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll re-secure this though. But if the chimney should be clogged or we have what we call positive pressure, mm -hmm. which means air is being sucked down the chimney. Right. And it's an, let's say, for example, you have an attic fan, an attic exhaust fan or right. a bathroom fan. And it's a really, really tight house. Well, the chimney is an opening. It's going right. to suck in air through the chimney. And if the boiler is on while it's happening, it's going to sense that heat and turn off the boiler because it's, that's potential exhaust gases entering into the house. Okay. So the only thing I did was after tapping the pressure <laughs> troll to see if sometimes the pigtails get clogged. Right. Um, once we bypassed the thermostat, I hit that button and I heard a click as soon as I did that. And hence we have operation. Right. And I right. took this apart to make sure that the chimney was clear. Right. Yeah. And the chimney is clear. But we're gonna not stop there. We're gonna we're gonna screw this back together, and then we'll test to make sure that we have good draft. So, this guy was saying that you need to replace 50, 60 feet of wet return. Right. First of all, it's not wet return. B, it's dry return. Right. <laughs> but if the if this dry return was clogged, mm -hmm. what you would have was at the furthest radiator from the boiler. Mm -hmm. You know those little silver things on each radiator called right. air valves. Yes. Water would be coming out of that with force. Okay. Because condensate, or the wet, the water, mm -hmm. is not making its way back to the boiler. It's like the piping here, which is covered in asbestos, but that's all good, right? We're not touching it. All the piping is pitched towards away from the boiler. Maybe here it's, it's pitched back, but at one point maybe it pitches away. Okay. And this pipe takes it back. If this pipe was clogged, water is not going to make, make its way back to the boiler, and this right. pipe will fill with water at the end of it. Right. And then when the steam comes on, it's right. going to try to push it out of the way, and it'll come out of the radio. Are you having that? No. Are you having any banging sounds like you didn't have before? No. So it's not clogged. Now, I don't know why this tripped, right? right. But I know the reasons why they do trip. Right. But I don't know why it tripped in this case. And we're okay. going to figure that out. Okay. I just put three screws in each. Did I put three in each one? Yeah, one, two, three. In each connection. Because that's code. Okay. Similar like this guy who put the water heater in. You have one, two, three on the, on the flue piping. Okay. Um, we're going to put the thermostat back in the wall, okay. and we're going to let this thing run for a little bit. I'm going to get a, a combustion analyzer. We're going to do a safety test on the boiler. Okay. Realistically, it looks, it looks spick and span clean. Good. Uh, we'll, see what the, we'll see what the numbers yeah. tell us, and we'll go yeah. from there. All right. So I've Good. never had the boiler turn up to 80 degrees. Nope. Let me show you. That shows me even more. He didn't know what he was doing. Or they didn't know what they were doing. Up there, the probe is inside top of the boiler before it gets diluted with the air from the bottom of the diverter just like if you're testing here you need to drill a hole there that way you can get the probe in there to test without diluted with air so it's been running for a little bit we're at 320 degrees i'm plugged into power because the battery is almost dead 8.3 percent oxygen no carbon oxide 82.8 percent efficient and 7.12 percent of co2 so far perfect all right so we're at 411 degrees everything is perfect literally like if this thing wasn't even hooked up to a chimney um nothing would happen bad because there's no carbon monoxide in the exhaust gases 
Uh, but obviously, it's hooked up to a chimney, and uh, you know you have <laughs> other 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 things in there that are not good. But uh, so we're good. So now that that's done, we're gonna hit the clipboard button. We're gonna hit the back escape button, and then we're gonna do test for draft. We're gonna pull the probe out because it needs to zero out. Don't put it on top of carpet because you'll melt the carpet. It's hot. Now we go to draft, hit OK, and it's going to zero out for 11 seconds. And then once that's up, we're going to stick that back in there and test for draft. On the side from what I do work. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so she, um, you know, a lot of my photography stuff on the other side. All right, and there is the issue. We have positive draft coming from the boiler or at the boiler. And that isn't good. So let's see if we can open some windows. Is that a door? Yeah. Let's open up that door and see if that changes this positive pressure, which is, I know it's borderline, but there's negative. Wow. Second you opened it, there's our negative pressure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No, and that's back to positive. Hmm. Still positive, back to negative. We're going to let this get the temperature and see back to that 410 degrees see if that changes all right so we're back to 410 degrees we are at slightly negative pressure oh now we're increasing interesting um there's a window right here one of the panes just has broken out not too long. Oh, but it's partially open too it looks like that yeah. window but i have a other another window on the outside so ah okay um you know uh Think of uh, the boiler and the amount of heat or energy it's using uh, in a matter of, of this fashion. These are not accurate numbers, but I just want to give you an example. Uh, for, for fresh air and what flame needs to burn. Right. So if you had a candle right, on, a, on a table, mm -hmm. uh, one candle, and you take a match, it's burning. If you put a cup over it, right, the candle will eventually go out because there's no oxygen. Right. right? Okay. Now, I noticed that the, the, mo the most part of this basement is, you know, Half it's finished, half it's not finished, and it's been that way forever, mm -hmm. right? However, think about having 100,000 candles in the basement isolated to this one little area here. Do you think that's enough oxygen for it to burn properly? No. Exactly. So I would, I would address makeup air. Um, the easiest way of doing that is securely having a window partially open. Okay. I say I say certain keywords there. Securely Secure. having a window partially open, right? You know, I've seen some <laughs> cases where there's bars on a window, right? And okay, and that will prevent you know someone from entering burglars, you know, because there's right. bad people in this world, unfortunately, right? Um, but if you have oxygen for the flame to burn, not only will it burn more healthy, but it's more efficient. But I want to correct. Now it's good. I want to correct when it first turns on, mm -hmm. right? That positive pressure, especially. Because I was here, forget about the wet return being clogged. I was here basically to reset that button. Wow. At the end of the day, I'm pre pressing a button. It's the same way like a light switch being off the top of the basement stairs right. on a Sunday morning. I didn't charge you Sunday rates because I just wanted to get you in because I just felt bad. And also, I just wanted something to get out of the house on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, I flipped the switch. Right. But I'm validating why that occurred. And we're talking about ways to prevent it from happening again. Good. And right now, you have, that's just great pressure now. Great negative pressure. And the only thing that's changed is the duration of time the boiler's been running. Okay. But why was the switch out? Could it have been when the, it first turns on, something wasn't perfect? It's possible. Those things just don't die. Same way, you know, um, okay. you know, relief valves on water heaters just don't leak for no reason. They leak on, on, the, on a boiler. They leak on, on a water heater for temper and, temperature and pressure. The expansion tank could be full, built the pressure, could cause a relief valve to trip. Which is full. <laughs> All right. There's the completed combustion test results. No carbon oxide. And I have point zero, negative point zero 0.03 on inches of water column on draft. So we are good. I remind the homeowner about the anode rod inside the water heater. Uh, we, you know, we still could check that if you want, but totally up to you. Um, plenty of time. Let's use the thermal imaging camera by HIK Micro, and let's see what this thing looks like. And we'll give him, the homeowner, a tour as well. So there's the pipe coming up at that center of the screen. That's steam. That pipe is 242 degrees. It's coming up across. There's that equalizer we were talking about, which goes to the Hartford loop, which is right there. 
And as you could see, right, they were claiming that this pipe was clogged. You have a piece of foam insulation on that's just gonna melt away. <laughs> but they were claiming that this pipe was clogged. If the pipe was clogged, there wouldn't be any steam there or temperature there of 232 degrees. Right, and on top of that, that's the automatic, that's the main steam air valve, which should be a little bit higher, but that's the way they put it in. You come down. Actually, there should be one at the end of this line, the steam main, not there. But there that is, but you're not clogged. You have hot temperature there. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing you didn't give them a check with, with a comma in it. <laughs> Uh, you can take a look at our steam main. It's, in, it's covered with aero seal, um, steam pipe, asbestos insulation. And it's fine. Don't touch it. You know, and you're okay. And it disappears there. It, we come across here and work our way around. And it continues going this way until it disappears into the finished part of the basement. Someone got a little crazy there with, <laughs> what are they doing? They changed your lead bend. Did you do the lead bend? Or someone, you hired a plumber for that. Yeah. Oh. All right, look at this. We have discharge on our 15 PSI relief valve. This is what you experienced before, right? Okay, we have almost 15 PSI of pressure in here. And wow, this is as good as it gets. We're gonna turn off the power to the boiler. And what this means is, and that, this further strengthens, it's just steam, this further strengthens the need for annual maintenance, okay. right? I can almost guarantee, and I could be wrong, that your pigtail is clogged, okay. right? And I can guarantee right now that your relief valve works <laughs> but you said this happened before yes it happened but i i was listening to what you were saying mm -hmm. you said you also had the he had the thermostat cranked up to like 80 something degrees 90 80 degrees, degrees. 80 degrees and i was like that really, that really doesn't make, make much sense to me and that's why i wanted to let things run here a little bit longer but okay. we had high pressure there and we still do right so the power's off here we're gonna get rid of more of that pressure by opening up that relief valve here See if it stays open. Good. Because now we need to take apart the pressure troll and expose that pigtail. Back door is open. Relief valve popped to close again. May have to hold that there. But I got the basement window open, getting rid of all that steam pressure. And that way we can take it off the pigtail okay. and check that. Good thing, you know, good thing I just didn't uh, come here, turn a switch on and leave. You know, I tell my guys this all the time. Listen, like, like changing a flapper in a toilet, right? You go to a house to change a flapper in a toilet and that's all you're doing. There's no real value in that. You're not really doing your job, right? Because your, your customer's paying $225 an hour plus the flapper, right? It's like with tax, it's almost 300 bucks. There's no value in that. I'll be pissed off. But if I didn't know how to change a flapper, you know, I, I would learn, <laughs> right? But, you know, there, there are a lot of guys out there and a lot of companies out there that they will, oh, the emergency switch is off, they'll turn it on, and then, like, put their hand out and, you know, charge the, the, the trip charge or whatever they're going to charge. Right? Right. I, and trust me, I, I do it frequently. Mm -hmm. Go to a house on a holiday or on a weekend, and the, mm -hmm. and the emergency switch is off, but I don't just turn it on, right? I'll, I'll notice it as I'm walking down the basement stairs as the homeowners bring me to the boiler or to the furnace. I'll notice it, and I'll just keep that in my mind. Don't open my mouth, just notice it, and then go to the boiler, okay? Nothing's doing it. Let's switch on top of the stairs. They'll tell me yes. Are you mm -hmm. sure? Yes. I'll go up there and turn it on. The boiler works. Now I'm going to do my combustion test like I just did here. We're going to let it run for a little while. Get your money's worth. I, that's, the way I, that's the way I was taught, and that's the way I teach others to do it as well. Right. Right. So now we have very little pressure in the boiler remaining. We're going to take out part that pigtail, which you've seen in other videos. <laughs> Okay, that's still open. It's hot, very hot, hot like fire. Damn, it's hot. <laughs> Can I use uh, 
A rag or oh, how about this little piece of bounty? Yeah, okay. She's hot. I wonder if she's clogged. Well, we know that's not clogged because steam's coming out of there. But is there a sink here? We can use. Yep. I want to. I want to cool this off before I can try. Mm -hmm. Before I try blowing through. Right. Pigtail surprisingly was clean. That's gonna mean the. That's gonna mean that the pressure troll is more than likely bad. We're gonna take off this this elbow and look inside there. All right. Let's see. <sighs> and she looks, she's clean. Cool. No, I don't need the towel. No, I'm just gonna cool that off now and with the and the sink. All right, pigtails clean, elbow and nipple going to the boiler are clean. Um, we're gonna turn the power on right now. There's no pressure troll installed. I want to make sure that the boiler does not. Wow, the boiler runs without a pressure troll. Wow. That's what I was. That's what I was afraid of. We have no pressure troll connected to the boiler, which is a vital safety, and the boiler runs. And that brings me to the lack of thermostat relay, which is normally on this boiler. Right there. How does this work? Okay. How is it working without a pressure troll installed? Hmm. Wow. And it's been like this forever. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. Hmm. All right. Here's our thermostat, which is hooked up to white and blue for R, H, and W. 24 volts is going to green and red like Christmas. Okay. And then that wire goes down to this box, and we're missing that thermostat relay. I don't know how this works, but the white, well, how this is working, actually. The white goes to gray. The gray goes to the pressure troll, which goes to the pink. The pink comes back and then goes to the low water cutoff, which then turns into a, turns into a blue? Hmm. All right, so we're at the point of the service call where this boiler is just unsafe for operation. Um, it's unfortunate that <laughs> I now drive a little uh, service vehicle, the Mercedes Metris. Um, I used to, for years, have a full-size van, um, up until including my last Mercedes um, Sprinter, the long wheelbase cargo van, which now has been handed down to one of my employees, Daniel. Um, so I don't have a relay <laughs> in the truck to make this work. So I am running to the shop and I know I have a steam trim kit. I have three of them company wide, um, a box, which I had in my previous truck. Um, cause sometimes we run into this, you know, those people out there who quote unquote want to call themselves plumbers or HVAC techs, they work on these machines, steam boilers that is, and you have, you have basically, you know, a couple control circuits that all work together. Um, and without confusing any of you, we have 110 volts going in, right, which feeds a transformer. That transformer is going to feed two separate circuits. We have a circuit for our 24 volts, which powers the lower to cut off and powers the automatic vent damper. We also have a control circuit or a safety circuit, which also has 24 volts going through it, which goes through the spill switch, the rollout switch, the pressure troll, the low water cutoff, the automatic vent damper, making its way back around finally to the gas valve. And unless you have an understanding of that, you know, if you start playing around with these wires, um, nothing good's gonna come of it. So right next to me, I got the steam trim kit for a Burnham Independence. And we are going to rewire this uh, with the proper harnesses, with the relay, and other cable connections 
to restore this boiler, which is not that old, to its original operating condition, but most importantly, making sure it's running safe and properly. I already documented the, the combustion analysis of the Tesla 320 that's burning perfectly. We just need to make sure that all of the safety circuits are now proper. All right, smash that thumbs up button. Let's get the show on the road. All right, so it took some work, but there is the thermostat relay behind the harness. And the pressure troll works if I disconnect the wire from it. We know the low water cutoff works. The vent damper does not work and I have it bypassed. And let's actually set that to manually open. And that was the one he just installed by others. And it looks fairly new too, but it's not working. The end switch does not communicate with the system and prevents operation. We tested the low water cutoff, the automatic feed turned on and our switch is back in place and the, the thermostat sorry transformer is mounted remotely so puts our switch right there we're good all right ladies and gentlemen i think i stressed the importance of situational awareness and not being a hit and run you go there you flip a switch on have a nice day there's no value plus you could be leaving a hazardous situation behind and guess what you're the last one there i know with a hundred percent confidence that that not only is that boiler running properly and burning properly because i tested and didn't guess i know that every single safety on that boiler is functioning right now it wasn't while i had that thermal camera out but i wasn't at that point yet for testing and to be honest with you, I may have I may have slipped that, but I will not be, and my company is not the company that will come there, relight the pilot, flip a switch on, reset a safety, and then leave. Because you never know what could be left behind and what could be lurking in the closet. You don't know. All right? So if you are in a similar position that I'm in, the trades. HVAC, plumbing technician, you work on equipment like this, do your due diligence. I cannot stress that enough. Do your due diligence, and together we can make the trades great again. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. Please consider smashing that thumbs up button. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. There's no course or obligation, it's free. And in a further help, the algorithm of YouTube to allow more people like you to watch videos like this. Thank you. God bless.